front of us work as well. Presuming not. Where do you start? As we used to say, do uh, you want the whole list or just the top ten? Uh, there's a few clear deliverables that uh, need to be uh, moved along. The uh, independent regulator has been long awaited. The regulatory law has been passed, but it's been a, a standoff between uh, the presidential administration and the prime minister and the government of France. Uh, maybe that is unlocked, but uh, will they be truly independent? Because with all these things, it's one thing to take the steps that have been suggested, but then you've got to actually see what it's really like to live with it, and how good are they going to be. It's a sine qua non, they have to be independent, but they also have to be fully capable, to have any credibility in the market to be able to keep, uh, keep order. Without that, it's very hard to see how a lot of investors would be willing to come in, not knowing that they will be able to move product, be able to get a fair price for it, and so forth. Uh, the second, uh, which I would say is top priority, is uh, to finally follow through with the unbundling. It's been a, uh, a long and, in some ways, confused discussion. I say confused because uh, they grouped in uh, what they would do with the upstream companies into the discussion, and that was meant to be a separate topic. That now we have uh, firm advice from the Energy Community Secretariat that that really should not be the case. But we haven't gotten to the hard part yet. The easy part is deciding on what the system should look like, how it should be unbundled. That's not a hard decision. What's a really hard decision are the things that nobody has got to grips with. And this goes back quite much to what the previous panel was saying on privatization. Do you know what you're going to be buying? You're looking to attract a partner into it. Do you know what they have? Now, from the company itself, I understand, they have all kinds of assets that really are just a burden to maintain, that do nothing for the system. And I'm not talking about the usual owning a, a football club or a, or a or a dairy farm or, or other social assets. I'm talking about actual parts of the infrastructure that uh, they, by law, are not permitted to shut down, close, rationalize. And it's an enormous burden. Now, how do you honestly expect anyone to invest in a company when they're saddled with us around their necks? Maybe it's another company. If you really want to uh, claim that these are sacred assets and they must be kept at all costs, then fine, make an additional company, a caretaker company, maybe a separate division of the state property fund. It'll do nothing but pay to maintain and maintain and keep these assets. They also have a question of can you do what you want? Let's say you're now the new proud owner of COA. Can you really do what you want with it? Are you ready for that? You know, a lot of these assets uh, are things that people might buy if they really thought they could uh, dispose of what they didn't want it. Uh, a lot of these things are real estate deals. I mean, uh, this happened a lot throughout the early years of the whole transformation, but not in Ukraine. Where you have enormous factories in the middle of town. It's a real estate deal. You don't actually want the company. You don't actually want to run the company. And yet here in the energy sector, we have companies that absolutely have to run. They provide essential public services. The number of employees, nobody wants to talk about this problem. But the level of underemployment, even at these very, very poor wages, that level is still vastly high. Just by parallel reasoning, uh, we had someone take over the state uh, oil company in Albania. They honestly needed 200 people to do what 5,000 people were employed to do. This is just, I'm not saying the numbers apply in the same way here, but to give you some idea of the scale of magnitude of the problem. So maintaining services, maintaining unemployment, you know, these are as important things to remember, uh, will also have to be resolved at the same time as you're trying to solve your energy requirements. And who is brave enough to get to grips with that, who wants to come in with 
all the other risks, you all know about I'm not going to uh, bore you with the usual litany of, uh, of corruption and side deals and impossibility of getting anything done with the low levels of institutional capability. You know all those things. If on top of that, a very difficult business proposition, are you really going to come and pay good money to do that? To be part of that? Or do you use your own money? So, to some extent, we're going to have to fix first before you can have any hopes of selling anything. And that includes the energy sector. And you're going to have to build the management teams, you're going to have to rationalize, you're going to have to take this pain over a little bit of time. But if you're going to have any chance to actually sell one of these companies, to get people in it, as opposed to simply building from scratch, building for new, if you're really going to get somebody interested in trying to fix the old, you're going to have to make an interesting proposition, fair game, and you have to accept that it's going to take time. There are no quick fixes for these things. 